Very warm welcome to everyone joining us for this preview. This is for the Friday meeting at Fairview. At this stage of the game, we're racing on the turf where the first race is due off at 12.50, and this will be a juvenile race over 800 metres. Joining me on the line is none other than Grant Paddock, who knows horses like the back of his hand. How are you doing, Grant? All good, Sheldon. All good this side, my man. Excellent, good to hear. Let's get straight into the action for the first race because unfortunately a number of unraced horses, so it's never easy. But looking at the betting, number seven, Summer Odyssey is currently at four to ten. That finished a decent second to first origin first time out. And just judging by the, the manner the horse was running on, of the race runners, I think there's only two race runners. Have you heard anything about the unraced horses? Um, Sheldon, listen, uh, there's the babies of, of Gavin will have a line through through some Odyssey, there's no doubt. The filly is definitely going to come on. She was pretty green in running and she battled to go with that early speed and finished off the race quite well. But as I say, Gavin will have a have a, a line through that, that horse. Um, the, for bipod players, definitely the three and the five go with it. Um, I wouldn't be bankering the favourite here. As I say, um, Gavin has got a line, so... Um, Three, five, and seven, you don't, You have to go a bit wider here. That favourite can get rolled over. Ah, okay, thank you very much. As you heard from Grand Paddock, numbers three, five, and seven. Let's sweep into race number two, which is over 1,200 metres. So that will be down the straight, the 1,200 metre trip. Once again, an odds-on favourite. Number four, Forest Spa is 8 to 10. Number six, Zatara Magic is 5 to 2. And the money's come for number seven, Jet Mirage, from 9 to 2, down 7 to 2. Now, Grant, when you look at race number two, number four, Forest Spa, three-year-old Global View, a horse who's obviously got definite ability. Are you worried about the 84 days off the track? Well, listen, he couldn't have picked a better race to, to bring him back. You know, graduation plate, you look at the top of the at the handicapping and, you know, he's pretty well clear. Decent, very, very decent colt. He had one bad run. Well, it wasn't really a bad run. He ran 3.2 to European summer in America at 80, 88. And this field is nowhere near that. Um, he should beat them and should beat them comfortably. Zotara Magic. Back up, back up 1,200 metres, a lovely horse could probably come back fresh. Um, I think it's the only danger. That horse, Jet Mirage, he's got problems at the pens. He, he, you know, he gets left and all kinds of stories with him. So I, I think the favourite's really the right horse in the race. So, I mean, you know, they've picked the right field for this team. Well, thanks very much, Grant. With the scratching of number five, London Roads, as you'll see in the computer form, London Roads was the best rated, but no longer. That's left it right open for number four, Forest Spa, and that will be a banker. Moving along to race number three, which is over 1,200 metres, and let's just have a quick look at the betting. Lady Chartouche, 16 to 10 from an opening call of 2 to 1. Number 2, Honeyland, 9 to 2. And then 5 to 1 about number 1, Chelsea Garden. Grant number 11, Lady Chartouche, after a promising introduction. I know, I know a lot of people would have been disappointed with the comeback run, but just seemed to lose it between the 8 and the 400 and then started to regain it. Yeah, Sheldon, she hated the poly. She really did. She didn't know where she was. Went into the first turn on the wrong leg, came out on the wrong leg. Uh, she still finished off in 22.6, which is a good finishing time. Back up the straight. Very, very hard filly to be. She's a beautiful uh, daughter of Vercingetorix. Um, very, very hard to beat. Uh, the guys that want to bank her can bank her with confidence. Um, the guys that want to go a bit bigger, you need to add maybe the, the 10, the 4, and the 2. But I'm very confident. She makes my best bet on the card, Lady Chartouche. The last time I chatted to you and we did the show for the first time together, we chatted about a horse who was around 2 to 1 and we said we thought it was the wrong price and it came home lonely. So 2 to 1 about Lady Shot 2 also looked to be a big price. Yeah, it's like finding money in the street with your name on it, I promise you. Um, <laughs> she should be closer to even money 9 to 10. There we go, down 16 to 10, and as you heard from Grand Paddock, closer to race time, probably around about 9 to 10, even money, another good bet on the card. That is a look at race number three as we go on to race number four. Once again, down the straight, 1,200 metres on the turf, where number three, Rose of Bayou, is looking for a full-timer, is the 7-2 to two favourite. And Grant, let's start with number three, Rose of Bayou. She's been winning over the 
16 and the 13. Are you slightly concerned dropping to the 1200 or no concerns from your part? No concern at all. Um, uh, Sheldon, she shows a lot of early speed. She, she races from up there. You know, she's got a two draw up the inside, which is not a bad thing at, at Fairview. With well, the draws, she's not really a bias up the straight anymore. But um, uh, she's just gone. Since she's joined Duncan, she's just gone from one uh, level to the next. And uh, every time you think she's going to get beaten, she wins a decent race. So I'm not going to go away from her. She's done nothing wrong. She's a fit filly. Um, Josh is riding her. Um, dangerous to her. Glass shoes, nice post maiden, only 3.8 off cool runnings uh, against the boys. Hilarity is also been with a chance, and so too Angel Debs. But definitely Rose of Bayou, my first pick, yeah. There we go. Rose of Bayou will be looking for another victory, climbing the ladder all the while. Informed stable, so stick with those horses who continue to churn out those wins. On to race number five, and it seems to be a sprint day at this stage. A thousand meters race number five. And looking at the current betting, let's get to the betting for race number five. Number one, Globe Tonic is seven to two, ahead of number 14. Picture the moment, four to one, then betting six to one and better the rest. We touched on the Gavin Smith stable. He's got a strong hand on the card. A horse returning from a 70 day absence. Despite being a big field, he's a horse who's on the up and he could still be way ahead of the handicapper. Yeah, Sheldon, he could be. If it was a 1,200, I would have given you all the confidence. But, you know, that, that five furlong at Fairview is a quick five. It's not a slow five at all. So um, he's going to have it all to do, especially with 61. And he comes from off the pace. Um, he'll have it all to do. So, you know, he, he is beatable. He's a very nice colt. He's on the improve. But it could be a furlong on the sharp side for him. Um, you might have to look at a horse like picture at the moment. He, too, he's also would have preferred it over, over, over 12. And then also I, I found yeah, a lurker that had starts third run, peak run back on the grass, Roger the Dodger for Duncan McKenzie. You know, he had two very good runs over over the shorter trip in, in Durban. He ran taken all to six lengths. And, you know, this is this is not a strong field at all. It's a merit rate of 68. So he's a definite lurker. Picture the moment must go in. Um, a horse like Psychedelic Eric, probably, uh, probably better over the thousand that he's running on now, and but maybe a bit better on the poly. But a very, very tricky race. You need to go pretty wide here. Um, you need about five or six horses to get yourself through. I'm glad you picked up number 11, Roger the Dodger, because this was one of my lurkers in the pack. As you mentioned, ran some decent races earlier behind Takanaut, a horse like Let's Do It. So at around 14 to 1, definitely a horse you've got to throw into all the equations. And then just getting back to number 1, Globe Tonic. I've never actually seen him have a race, so looking at the comments, he seems to be quite a stubborn horse. Do you know a bit more about that? Yeah, he's a very quirky horse, and he's a strong little bugger as well. Um, he, you know, he wants it all his own way, but um, he's, he's, a, he's got a very good finish on him. So if they might get away from him, that's my only concern. And making that kind of ground up with a 61 is not going to be easy. He does give a he's a very, he's more stubborn than anything else, you know. He, but he's 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 a very decent colt. There's no, there's no doubt about it. He's, I think he's going to win a couple of races down here. And as soon as he goes around the turn, I think he'll even be a better horse. Well, there you have it, Grand Paddock. On the nail, they hit the header on the nail, spot on the button there. A horse is looking for the extra, he's got the ability and will keep a very close eye. If he gets lost early on and they sprint away from him, he'll be having to make up that ground later on. Let's step into the territory of race number six, another big field year, where number one, Divine Dynasty, is your marginal favourite at seven to two. From number five, Global Goddess at nine to two. Number two, Miss Millstream is eleven to two. Grant, when you look at race number six, they go around the turn 1,400 metres, and you look at the size of the field, you've got to throw in a number of horses, yeah, I believe. Um, Sheldon, you know, it's, I don't, I'm not actually going that wide. I've narrowed it down to four horses. If, you go, if we go wider than that, then we might as well go the field. But um, this really rose a Dorada. Uh, even though she's drawn out wide, you know, you've got Master Louis on, and um, he'll make sure that she's in a striking position, if not in front. Massive runner. A really, really good run last time out. One and a half to Chronicles of Narnia. Um, big, big runner. Global got their same story as well with a bad draw. Also, good last run to Rhythm of the Rain. Running up very strongly on the poly. She'll enjoy the long straight. So those two, two principal contenders. And Miss Millstream's been running against Stronger. 
and uh, a good run last time out to Demigrad. Probably a mile, maybe caught her out last time out, back to the 1400, that'll suit. And then there's Divine Dynasty, you know, finished like a train last time out, but unfortunately he also finished coughing her last two runs, so there's obviously an issue there. So I thought the winner would come from 4, 5 or 2. Um, I don't think you really need to go much further than those three and add in the one for cover. Would it be fair to say that if you have a wide draw, Fairview is probably the course that you want to have a wide draw at? Yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. You, you, you know, you've got so much back straight and so much straight up the you know, 750 metres, um, those wide draws aren't really a big concern to me. Well, that's great news. So Grant's narrowed it down to numbers 2, 4 and 5 for the shortlist. And for those players who are looking to throw in a couple of their fancies, maybe you find a 14 or a 20 to 1 shot you can add in. Let's go on to race number 7 at 16.25, over 1,600 metres. Once again, a wide open betting field. Number 1, waiting for summer, 3 to 1. Number 5, Atkinson Grimshaw is 33 to 10. And then 4 to 1 and upwards the balance. Grant, when you look at a horse like number 1, waiting for summer, he was running in the Cape against horses like Universal, Pomp and Power and the big guns there. His rating was a 99. I like the fact they've dropped him from an 85 to an 81 from his last run, but he seems quite low on confidence. What's going to change his, his attitude to get back into the winner's box? Sheldon, that's a very good question. I think, I think Gavin and Tara are scratching their head with this horse, and they came with a big reputation to win a lot of races in PE, and he really has battled. His best run here was four lengths to Herodotus in the pinnacle and never reproduced that kind of a run. So he needs to turn it around. Uh, I don't know what they can do to get him to turn around, but um, he's been quite a disappointment down here. I must be he's, you know, he's always there and thereabouts, but he never looks he never looks to threaten. Let me put it to you that way. He never looks to threaten. Yeah, I found a, a horse at a very nice price. A horse number seven, Secret is Ours. Um, you know, Alan likes to give them a, a sprint up before they get over their right distance. And he ran a cracking race last time out on the poly over 1,300 metres. Finished in 22.2. He's got a one draw. He's over his trip of a mile. Richard for rehab. I think he's six or seven to one. Completely the wrong price. And I, I make him the winner of this race. And I, he's quite a confident selection as well. Um, then you get Atkinson Grimshaw. Done nothing wrong lately. He's held good form. Um, he's got to be a runner. And um, as well as uh, there's also a lot of parties there and thereabouts, and, and King's Crusade. But um, I'm confident. I, I really like the source um, secret is ours today. Well, tongue in cheek, the secret is no longer ours. As soon as the show is put out there, the word will be out, and that seven to one will be snapped up. So, hopefully, for you and the guys, you get on early, and the secret is ours will come through. Number one, waiting for summer. We're waiting for that next victory. So, perhaps take some swingers and exactors, but Grant Paddock saying that number seven, secret at ours. Alan Kriev likes to give them that sprint up and Grant Paddock, a horseman of the highest quality. He knows exactly what the horses in Port Elizabeth are all about. So number seven, secret as ours, could definitely be the value. And then let's just quickly sweep through race number eight, where number nine, Guy Alexander is seven to two. The confidence will be up there. Number three, American Landing is at five to one. And then we go out to 11 to two about Dirty Martini. Let's touch on Guy Alexander. Came back with a flourish last time. Yeah, his first run here, first run on the poly, he absolutely smashed him. And um, he didn't do too much to, to beat him as well. So, you know, a week later, I think there's seven horses in this race that ran last week. Um, punters must have a look at scratchings on Friday morning, what's going to run and what's not going to run. But the way this horse won, I can't see him getting beaten here. He got a six-point penalty, probably should have got a touch more. But... Um, Guy Alexander for me without a doubt and, and you need to cover him with a horse like Dirty Martini who ran second to him but two lengths, uh, two kilos better off but it was a sound sound beating um, then after that you know American Landing also ran behind it ran fourth they all held by Guy Alexander so he's just got to run similar kind of race and he's got this field stand there and uh, just for bigger players this horse number 15 Mingxi bottom weight uh, working very nicely at home Make sure that you guys put it in your, your, your pick six perms, please, and place accumulators. But if the guys that want to go lighter, Guy Alexander's your horse. 
There we go, Grand Paddock. Thanks very much to Grand Paddock. Guy Alexander, number three, American Landing. Those will be the two horses you can structure your bets around. So thanks very much, Grant, and have a wonderful day. And hopefully the secret is ours. The secret's out now, so the money will be down. And let's go on to the exotic bets. We'll have a look at Grant's exotics, and then we'll move on to my exotics. So thanks very much to Grant Paddock, pointing us in the right direction. As you can see, his value bet, race seven, number seven, secret is ours. So race seven, number seven, secret is ours. That's the value bet. Race three, number 11, Lady Chartouche. That is the best bet on the card. Open two to one, has shortened down 16 to 10. And as we both thought, probably around about even money come race time. Suggested multiple bet will be race three, number 11, Lady Chartouche for the win, on to race seven, number seven, Secret is Ours, which will be the place bet there. Let's move on to my suggested bet for the Fairview meeting, and I keep it quite simple. I go for the bar pot. We leave it to the expert Grant Paddock in Fairview, and he'll point us in the right direction. My bar pot, I've got two bankers, banker seven by banker four. By one, two, eleven. By three, four, five, and nine. By numbers one, seven, nine. By one, two, four, and five. Thank you very much to Grant Paddock for being on the line. And that's the show for the Fairview meeting. Best of luck to all. And most importantly, have fun, enjoy, and hopefully the horses do it for you on the track.